First of all, before I start, how about this? So what if everyone decided that the place where you lived was so wonderful, they all moved there? I was born and raised in Bozeman. So I understand the whole thing about moving everywhere because the United Nations says that 70% of us will live in cities by 2050. Uh-huh. Why? Well, because cities are the true centers of government. You see, a city cannot stop functioning because someone throws a tantrum. And elected officials actually have to work with all of us to actually get anything done. But cities have a problem. How, when they grow, do we stay a part of it? How does it maintain meaning for us? Well, there's a lot of things that cities are doing, right? They're using apps and all this technology, big data stuff like apps and social media and Internet of Things, these little devices that they put in sewers and they smell the sewer, you know, and they verify the air and, you know, they listen for gunshots and they triangulate a gunshot before you call 911. It's immense, quote, big data. This proves that nature is much better at big data than we are. But the point is that they're trying all these different things, including San Francisco listening to what their sewers say and watching for tweets about people who compel, you know, complain about stinky stuff around the city, you know, and, they overlay those two things, and what they get is toxic restaurants. That's a pretty cool use of technology, right? Or how about an app that allows you to complain to the city about everything from noisy neighbors to potholes? Okay, New York, that's a pretty cool tweet. How about a technology that they put a puck in every single parking space, and they let you have an app, and now you can pull it open there. I could park there. Notice that you'll never find this much parking in San Francisco, but that's a really good idea. The point is all of this stuff, all of this, quote, big data, it doesn't pay any attention that you are the major contributor of the big data itself. You can find all the answers, but unless we have the tools to be able to understand how it affects us on a daily basis, and in the future, it doesn't mean anything. Big data science and all the rest are really interesting. It needs to come down to us. So we can look at places that actually build communities, you know, because they're all trying to do it themselves, businesses, right? They're using big data and gamification. They watch everything we do, right? Our interaction with each other or what we do when we buy something, who we, you know, who else we buy from, our demographics, our psychographics, and all the rest of the stuff. Believe me, I've been all there. The biggest issue with all of that stuff is that they're using this technique called gamification. And gamification used to be really simple. It was by buying something, you got frequent flyer miles, those kinds of things. Now it's about your interaction with each other as a customer, right? And it's about you actually telling the company every time that you make a purchase what you think of them. And they're actually asking you what you think they should be selling. The thing is that it's all about you. If that's the case, the one thing that they generate is loyalty, but what they really do, they get us to participate. What else do we want in our community? We want to participate. So when we look at all of this stuff, right, it's so, we're so driven by it right now because of all the problems at national and state level that we just want to be part of something. 
So like iCitizen, it lets you take out an app and you vote it. I love this app, by the way. The cities don't listen to it, but it gives you a really good way of understanding, well, I agree or I have no idea what they're thinking. But it's a vote, it's a process that allows us to share what we think in the moment, right? So if we're going to actually affect something that, if, that allows us to continue to build our community as we grow massively, what are we going to have to have? Well, I think to start, we need three things. First thing is, it has to be for everyone. It can't just be on an app. A bunch of dweebs can't just, like me, can't just have an app and use the app and then basically, you know, have something. It has to be in every public space, maybe on digital signage, whatever. We need to have access. Every citizen in the community needs to know what's going on for them that day. Next thing is, it can't just be about complaints, you know? Just after complaints, you've already solved everything. No, that's not the issue. All that big data, all of that information that's out there that comes from stinky tweets and all the rest of this stuff, we should all have that. We all need that. We interact with the city on a daily basis. We interact with each other on a daily basis. We need all the answers and help we can get. And you know, Amazon asks us what we think about their service every time we use it. We get to choose, you know, say, we like that color, or that packaging is amazing. But we only get to vote every two years. I mean, honestly, really? If we're going to be involved in this community as it changes on a daily basis, we need some stars, we need some thumbs up and thumbs down, we need yes or no polls on an almost continual basis about all kinds of stuff. So I'm a designer, but I am not a data designer, and I am not a dashboard designer, but I've come up with something that's going to be really hard for you to see on this little screen or whatever. So you imagine there's two scenarios, two base scenarios. First scenario is daily life. So let's look at a scenario for daily life that's something that we all understand here, cleaning the snow off the streets. You put sensors into little into snow plows like they do in Chicago, and now you can watch those snow plows as they go around the community. And as they move around, right, you can see not only where they've been, but how soon they're going to get there. You overlay things like 311 complaints and, oh, like tweets. It's pretty icy out there. City can use that right now to add more sand and clean the sidewalk. You can understand that at 8.35 in the morning, there's a 90% chance that your sidewalks are going to be cleaned in front of your office. All of that came from a mixture of a whole bunch of information that you see when you first open. The next thing is that during that same day, there's a big topic going on how to make downtown Bozeman even more walkable. Oh, it's maybe diagonal parking, protected bike lanes, cutting down to two ways on Main Street. This is a favorite topic of mine. You run scenarios on it. You ask your fellow citizens what they are. Everybody gets to see it. Everybody gets to understand what's going on. The point is this. I didn't have to go to a place in the city hall for a meeting that I didn't know existed because I don't get the paper anymore, and I don't have time to go there. I can just pull open something and I can see it around my community. My daily life is I get to work. Long term, I can make a change with what we're doing. The point is this. It should be as easy to participate in our community as it is to post on Facebook. Thank you.